Hi, and welcome to DCO Graphics Studio. In these videos, I show the process for creating architectural and 3D designs using Rhino and Grasshopper. So if you're an architect, student, or anyone that wants to learn how this program works, make sure to subscribe for future content. If you have any questions or ideas for future videos, let me know in the comments below. I will also be sharing the script on my site, capettidavid.com. In this video, I'm going over this uh, pattern finding kind of process for creating some of these interesting sacred geometrical patterns, just using basic subdivisions uh, and extracting some patterns from that. So um, let's jump in and let me show you how to get this done. When it comes down to geometry, I like to bring it down to the basics. So one of the things that I would like to start in this um, kind of lesson is to start with the basics, right? So we only have, we can start with not nine numbers, right? And we have nine real numbers, and then we have 10 numbers if we include zero. So let's start by creating a circle. In this circle, let's give it a radius. I'll just go to 10. In this circle, I like to plug this into a curve component this way. We don't have this preview plane here that is showing up with the circle component. So now we can change the size of the circle. And with the circle, now we're going to divide it. I'll double click here and divide it by using divide curve. And I'll plug in this curve into the curve input. And for the count, we'll go to three less than nine. So we'll start at three and we'll go all the way to nine because these are the minimum numbers that you can have. So three is going to be the smallest number to create a plane, unless you have a circle. And then nine is going to be the largest number before it starts repeating again. So when we get to 10, 11, 12, we start repeating some of the patterns, but let's actually increase this to 20 and just leave it at nine. So I want to show you how simple it is to create some very beautiful and uh, intricate patterns just using very simple numbers. Now that we have these points, let's bring in a line component and plug in the points both to the start and to the end. And we're going to need to graft one of the points, either the end point or the start point. And that will give us this pattern which will literally connect all of the points from uh, one side to the other. And this is what's going to give us the patterns that we'll be creating. So we can go down to three, go up to, you know, 20, but we'll keep it at nine for now. So now that we have this line, the next step to get some points in the middle is going to take this line and to just get the midpoint. So when we get the midpoint of this line segment, of this line segment, of this line segment, it will give us this pattern. And in this output, we have 81, right? So we have 81 points that are created with nine subdivisions we can always change this in this kind of fractal way. So let's go back to nine and let's bring in these midpoints. Now, there are different ways to connect these points, right? We can take all of this and disable the preview. And I'll take this midpoint and go to mesh. And first, let's do um, the line edges, which I always have a hard time saying. And the input points we're going to flatten and this will give us some really neat patterns just by using those so let's also this has a plane so this will also show up on our preview one of the ways to get rid of that um oh and we don't have a midpoint 
which could be something that you may want to add, but sometimes the midpoint will show up. Um, and that's, I guess, one of the things that doesn't look as good here with this one. But ultimately, the one that I think looks the best is going to be our 2D, just regular Voronoi. We'll plug in these midpoints into the points, flatten the input. And now, for the boundary and for the plane, we're going to, um, well, we're not going to do anything for the boundary, really. We could, um, but I'm going to show you a trick so we don't have to use the boundary. And then the plane is going to be where it's sitting. So we can, you know, bring in an X, Y plane. We can plug that both to the circle and here to this plane. This way, it doesn't really give us that issue. And I'll change the preview mode to rendered so I don't see the construction plane. And as you can see, we have some really cool patterns. Starting at three and working our way up with four, five, six, and so on to nine. Then we go to 10 and so on. Let's also disable the preview on the points. So for this next portion, we're going to take this very simple pattern. We're going to create some planes and um, basically turn this into a custom pattern. This way you can laser cut it. You can um, do many things with it. Um, and that's what we'll be doing next. So one of the things that we could do is replace this boundary with a square, right? With a rectangle. Now the rectangle would have somewhere around this circle and i would actually use this circle as a boundary but you'll see that it actually doesn't work so for this we would have to bring in something like a box and this will put a box around it now we can go to item or deconstruct and then list item to bring out one of those spaces. I'll disable the preview on all of this and use this as a boundary. This will tie it to that corner. Now we can plug this into a boundary surfaces and get a plane for each and every single one of those. And we'll disable the preview here on this circle. Now, we can take a look at these surfaces. The other trick, so that's one of the tricks is using the boundary. The other trick that I, that I actually like better is to take this circle and create a surface right at that circle. So using boundary surfaces, you can create a brand new surface with using that circle. And one of my favorite tabs is the intersect tab, physical, B rep, and curve. So where we where the B rep and a curve intersects, we're gonna have where the surface and the Voronoi pattern intersect, it will extract those curves. So I'll disable the preview on all of this. And I will plug boundary surfaces into Now I will make sure to enable the preview on this and disable the preview on the curves. And now we're only extracting the largest here to flatten. When you flatten it, it seems to take away the creases in between, which I don't really want to do yet. So now that we have this, 
let's take a look at what some of these numbers create. So let's go back to you know three won't create anything and it'll actually start here at four, so on. And we've only used kind of this midpoint. So this is how basic we need to go to create that pattern. And with this, we can now create a offset. If I were to, off if I were to offset this by, let's say 1.5 or less. I'll actually plug in that surface into the offset. And now we've kind of created a frame around those. So just wanted to show you a little bit of um, some form finding, kind of sacred geometry type of um, design that you can easily do with using simple numbers. So starting here, uh, with you know the basic numbers from 0 to 9 and then from there on the pattern kind of repeating factually and then here you can change the size of this and here at the end we have those cutouts so this is something that you could laser cut CNC and create some really neat patterns now most of the pattern is created using this midpoint. If we were to take those lines and use a divide curve and divide those curves in three and using the output points as to remove the duplicates. So we'll take these points plug it into this component called call duplicates and it'll remove all of the redundant points as you can see we had coming in we had seven or 676 now we have 143 so this will make it a lot easier for for this to compute now as you can see I'm change the result here just by changing the input one so this is going to be a subdivision of two, three, four, five, and so on. And so this is using three, and then here going to the number of divisions here to nine. So we can go to the initial division, which is nine, and then further divisions, which is three, four, five, and so on. And as you can see, we can kind of keep that all the way down here, how complicated this pattern can get. I'm changing the range here a little bit. Go to four here. And sometimes it's cool to kind of play around with the specific numbers. So you have four and four maybe four and eight, right? We know that those numbers are kind of complementary. We can do four and six. They're also complementary. Four and 10, you know, or you can do, you know, other numbers like 13 and eight. Those stay, uh, are kind of within the Fibonacci sequence or you can do three and five, right? And these will all give us some specific patterns that are very unique in each way and they're all perfectly and uh, geometrically symmetrical uh, using basic points so two ways of doing it using this one or this one and one way to fix two inputs in one is double clicking on the wire 
taking these points, plugging them into this one, and you can double up the points on here, but you may not want to do that. So let me show you. We'll plug in this one, double click on here and disable or right click and enable, and you'll only be looking at these, the midpoint one. Now we can disable this one and enable this one. But for now, I'll be taking some of these um, and I'll just be baking it. So let's go here to now resurfaces and just let's see what we can do here we can probably extrude this using a point attractor or something like that but for the most part this was the idea to show you how to create those patterns so if you have any questions if you learned something new let me know um thank you for watching and i hope to see you next time I hope that was useful. Thank you very much for being here and I hope to see you next time.